Cowan CEO Jeffrey Solomon joins us here at Post 9. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, Sarah. So are you rethinking what kind of year we're going to have based on the rethink for economic data and what the Fed is doing? No, actually. And the reason is when I was here in January, we talked a little bit about this. Like, I think the Fed couldn't have been, couldn't be more clear. Rates are going to be higher for longer. I heard Howard talk about it a little earlier. Like, I totally agree. Like, he's been very clear. And actually, I think that has a stabilizing effect because when Powell comes in and is super consistent about what they're going to be doing with rates, the market actually gets around it much more quickly. So I'm not... I, no, but what's, no. Fine. You can say that the Fed's been telling us this all along. All but along. what's different yeah. since the last time you were on is we've had this string of really good data. And now the Atlanta Fed GDP tracker for this quarter is at 2.7 percent. Yeah. So the fundamentals are, are changing. Nobody expected that this burst of acceleration so, this year. Yeah. So I, I, I think when you, when you look at, 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 at markets in transition or infl economies in transition, it doesn't all happen at one time. You get these fits and starts with where some data actually reaffirms maybe we, we, we're not done with inflation yet. And then other other data starts to come in and it, and it lets you see that we've we've maybe moved past peak inflation. Right. And and that's to be expected. We're going to get these aberrant numbers or numbers that don't necessarily line up because we're in transition. And that's really a critical element of, I think, what's happening here. The labor market's super tight, right? We know that, we know that. right? Yes. And so every time we get a strong labor number, the market freaks out a little bit. I'm like, hey, the, the labor markets are super tight. And the Fed is going to stay there with their foot on the labor markets until they can see some loosening of that. So is it going to be a tough year for the markets? I, I, it's hard to say that it's going to be a tough year. Last year was a horrendous year. You know, when you look at just history proves you, you're not going to have back to back years like that. Now, I, when I was here in January, I did not expect the kind of rally we had. But I also said I, don't, I didn't think we were going to be continuing to put in new lows because the market has its head around it. So have we gotten a little bit ahead of ourselves? Was last week sort of an example of, OK, we needed to take a little bit of froth out? Yes. But it's not like we're heading in, a, in an incredibly new direction because of one re, because of one inflation reading because of the tight labor markets. That's just the reality of some data will support that, some data won't. You'll get some volatility. That's what makes Pool markets. Who is a cucumber? Jeff Fox. <laughs> Nothing yeah. bothers me. You, know, you mentioned aberrant data, and one of my favorite lines this morning is a note that says, are we really meant to believe that U.S. consumers purchased more goods and services in January than any month in 22? Probably not. I mean, it's, it's the, been the magnitude of the aberration that has people confused, right? Yeah. So, again, I, I'm, I don't have all that data. We, we, what we see at Cowan a little bit is we definitely see softening of demand. Like, I, I don't know where that data comes from. The stuff that we're seeing and, and, and what we're seeing, again, from companies like Target or Walmart or Home Depot is that there actually is some slackening in demand, right? Those are pretty fundamental bellwethers. Like, I don't think we necessarily need to overlook at every piece of data that comes in and overanalyze it. And you can take a look at the aggregate, particularly retail sales, and it suggests to you, yeah, there's been a slackening of demand a little bit, right? Or at least not an acceleration of demand. And so I look at that in the aggregate. I'm like, those people know more than I know. And, uh, and if that's what's happening, sure. What about the view on the capital markets? Yeah. IPOs, still not happening. M&A, maybe a little bit. Yeah, so... Debt refinancing is up a lot. Yeah, so again, I, I think the, uh, if you look at uh, the equity market, so first of all, we needed, to, we needed to establish some sort of baseline. There's been actually more IPOs this year already uh, than, than there were last year, that's for sure. Uh, and I, I think there's been seven Nothing of them. big. No, but seven of them, and they've all traded well. Six of the seven have traded well. I think yeah. there's some big names. People are starting to float this idea that big names, some consumer names are going to be back in the market. We've seen a few biotech IPOs, and I know we've been mandated on a bunch. So, you know, I think people are going to begin to test this again and see how it goes. It won't be as bad as last year, that's for sure. The debt market's a little bit of a different uh, tenor. We're still sort of the leveraged lending market with banks is still pretty tight. Right. We haven't really seen that market clear the way I would have well, I'd like it to clear. And so that's going to put a lid on sort of sponsor backed M&A maybe for the first half of the year. But what I would say is, again, what we're hearing is people need to get some things done. And so as we head into the second half of the year, I would expect that will loosen up a bit. and We'll see more activity in M&A than we've seen in the first six weeks or eight weeks of the year.